burning, 397. <clears throat> Brightly beams our Father's mercy from His Peace, peace. 
I'll go ahead and hold them high. Good. Glad everybody is here. Would like to extend our condolences to Tammy on the sudden passing of her husband, Andy, who might uh, end up missing later. We may need to uh, spring for some bail money for Granny Faye. <laughs> they really do love each other. I'm sure they do. I know they do. But we're glad everybody is here. Glad that you're out tonight. Uh, we will encourage you to be careful going home here in a little while. Uh, as you can hear and tell, we've got some pretty strong weather uh, on us and around us. So uh, please uh, uh, be mindful of that as we leave. I hope you got a handout. Um, they were being distributed tonight by... Uh, uh, who was that? Who did that? Granny Faye? That was Miss Narita. Miss Narita did that. I get my ladies confused who uh, helped pass out. Uh, those outlines. If you didn't get one, I don't know if there's any left or not. There may be a couple. Gary's got them. So Gary's out there and we're in here. Okay? So if you need one, just let us know. You can grab it on the way out tonight. But it's really a continuation, part two, uh, from last week on how to imitate Jesus uh, better. Uh, does anybody need one? Because Gary's here. He's got, he's got them. Anybody want one or need one that did not get one? I think, I think Miss Narita did a good job. Thanks, Gary. I don't see anybody. But last week, if you remember, um, as we were trying to figure out maybe a, a practical way, um, a day-to-day -day way to uh, apply um, the lesson to our lives on, on how to imitate Jesus better, to be more like him each and every day, uh, because our theme for the year of 2022 is simply Jesus Christ in and through you. Last week we talked about uh, having the mind and the heart uh, of Jesus. And I think these are on the top of your uh, handout if you wanted to uh, uh, write those in again. You don't have to. It's kind of a brief uh, review. Uh, but having the mind and the heart of Jesus. Now, we can better imitate Jesus by sharing in people's joy and pain. Joy and pain. Uh, from last week, number three, we can uh, imitate Jesus better uh, by having a, a habit of assembling for worship. Having a habit or a custom of assembling for worship. And then the last one from last week is by being submissive or in subjection to doing God's will when it's easy, but especially when it's difficult or hard. However you want to fill it in. And again, I want to emphasize the scriptures that we started out with last week because they're going to uh, apply even tonight. Luke chapter 9 uh, verse number 23, uh, Jesus told his disciples for them to uh, take up their cross daily and to follow him. Paul even tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 1 to, to imitate him, Paul, as he imitated Christ. And then in Philippians chapter 2 verse 5, probably one of the more familiar scriptures from last week, uh, Paul says there that we are to uh, uh, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. So we're to have the mind and the attitude uh, of Christ. And then a very clear statement in Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 1. Paul there writes that we are to be imitators of God as dear children. Be imitators of God as dear children. So that's kind of a brief, uh, simple recap from last week. So everybody's on the same page. We're going to continue to share with you a few more suggestions on, on how we can uh, imitate uh, Jesus Christ better because that's what the world that we live in today needs desperately when we go back out into our mission field wherever uh, our daily routine and our life will take us people need to see and and hear uh, encounter Jesus in our lives as Christians uh, and so we want to know how can we better imitate Jesus no doubt we are all striving to imitate Jesus that's why it's worded how to imitate Jesus better we want to do better at imitating and following uh, him. And these are just some suggestions. I know that you can probably come up with several more. I encourage you to do that. But the first one for tonight is do not allow prejudice to turn you aside from God's will. That's the first one for tonight. Do not allow prejudice to turn you aside from God's will. The word prejudice, if you look it up in uh, like Webster's Dictionary, simply means to have a preconceived opinion. 
uh, to, to have a bias or, or even a partiality towards someone or something. It is uh, to have uh, an attitude uh, of intolerance and even discrimination. And a lot of times these uh, are, are based on race, maybe religion, uh, maybe even uh, gender. A lot of different social barriers and appearances cause us many times without even realizing we're doing it uh, to respond or act or treat someone uh, with prejudice, with a, with a preconceived uh, opinion or idea. And a lot of times it's based on outward appearance. By the way someone maybe dresses or acts or the way that they, they live or, or, or just some kind of an outward appearance where we look at that person and almost immediately we have prejudged them. And we need to be very, very careful about that. In John chapter 7, I want you to turn with me in your Bible tonight and look at a few scriptures with me. John chapter 7 and verse number 24. John chapter 7 and verse uh, 24. When we look at the life and the example that Jesus has set for us, we don't find a remote inkling of prejudice. Even, even common people would come out and, and hear and uh, uh, experience Jesus. Je Jesus was by far a, a people person. And he didn't let social barriers or any kind of uh, uh, social agenda uh, prevent him from interacting uh, with people. Here in John chapter 7 verse uh, 24, Jesus says, Do not judge according to appearance, but judge with righteous judgment. But a lot of times, what do we do? We judge based on appearance. You know, they always say, don't judge a book by its cover. We do that a lot. We, we judge a person or, or base what we're going to do or what we're not going to do or how we're going to interact with them many times simply by the way they appear. Their, their outward appearance. 1 Samuel chapter 16 and verse 7. The scripture uh, says that the Lord does not look at a man as man does. The Lord looks at the heart, not at the, at the outward appearance. So again, we have to be careful. And there's a lot of scenes in the New Testament where Jesus would interact and deal with people that the disciples might have turned uh, their nose up or questioned uh, why Jesus was uh, interacting uh, with certain people. For example, the woman at the well in John chapter 4, the Samaritan woman uh, at the well. Uh, not only was she a woman, but she was also a Samaritan. Yet, Jesus, going beyond all barriers, he interacted with her. He talked with her. He, he shared with her things uh, that, that many people would, would not have uh, done and changed that woman's life. They are at the well just by simply having a conversation with her. In Matthew chapter 15, uh, a, a woman of Samaria, a, a Gentile woman comes and this woman's daughter is, is, is uh, demon-possessed. And Jesus interacts with this woman and he heals uh, her daughter because of the faith that this Gentile lady had in, in Jesus. And so time and time again, we, we find Jesus interacting with uh, people uh, that many times the disciples didn't want to. And so we have to be very, very careful. Thomas? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Even at times, Jesus wanted those children to, to seek him and to be able to interact with him. But the disciples were like, no, no, maybe Jesus is too busy. Doesn't have time for these little kids. And so he rebuked them as well. So there, there's a lot of scenes where we find Jesus interacting with, quite literally, anyone and everyone. And we need to make sure that we are doing that as well because every person that you look at, represents a soul and so we got to be able to get beyond what we see with our eyes we've got to get beyond 
uh, the physical appearance of someone. May, maybe the way they, they dress or the way that they talk or the way that they live their life or whatever it may be that could be a prejudiced, biased, impartial, uh, it could be a, uh, an act of intolerance, whatever it might be that might cause us to, to not treat them like Jesus would. We need to be very, very careful. Remember the Great Commission? Matthew 28, verse 19. Jesus said, Go therefore and make disciples of the nations that agree with you, right? No. Go into all the world and, and preach the gospel to everybody, to every creature. Mark 16 and verse 15. The gospel's for who? It's for everyone. It's for everyone and, and anyone. And I like the song that our kids sing. Uh, Jesus loves the little children of the world, all the children, and they're what, red and yellow, black and white? They are precious in his sight. And then I think back to John 3, 16. Who doesn't know John 3, 16 here tonight? For God so loved the world. Love the world. That's not just good people. That's not just white or black or purple. Not just men or just women. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. We need to have that kind of love. So, as we go back out into our world, out into the mission field that God's called us to live, you won't meet someone, you won't cross paths with anyone who doesn't need Jesus. And so we don't need to let barriers or, or things uh, that we might use as prejudice or bias against someone thinking they don't need Jesus or they don't deserve the love of God. Do any of us deserve anything from God? Of course not. So we don't want to be uh, prejudiced or, or biased or, or partial, showing favoritism uh, to other people. That's the first one. Uh, let's move on to number two. Uh, the second one tonight, uh, if, if we're going to imitate Jesus better, uh, then we need to stand up for God and his word against those who pervert the Bible. We need to be willing to stand up for God and his word against those who would pervert the Bible. There's a lot of perversions of scripture uh, that happen. If you just uh, get in your car during the day and you turn on uh, the radio and you listen to uh, preachers on the radio and things like that, uh, you're going to hear some really good lessons. You really are. You really are. You're going to hear some good stuff. But you're also going to hear some false teaching. You're going to hear some things that are not uh, uh, taught in Scripture. So we've got to be willing to, to take a stand and, and to uh, share with people uh, what the Bible says and how the Bible uh, teaches us. We've got to take a stand. Sometimes that's hard, isn't it? It is hard because we maybe don't like confrontation. You know, we don't like telling somebody, hey, uh, you're wrong and, and I'm right. And that's not even the right attitude, is it? No. So, if you will, take your Bible and turn to 2 Timothy chapter uh, number 4. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Regardless of how difficult or challenging it may be, if we're going to imitate Jesus better, then we've got to be willing to take a stand for God, uh, for God's word uh, against anyone and everyone who would pervert uh, the word of God, the Bible. Uh, 2 Timothy chapter number 4. Uh, the charge that uh, old man Paul gave to young man Timothy. 2 Timothy chapter 4, uh, verse 1. Paul told him, I charge you therefore before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who will judge the living and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Verse 2, preach the word. Now I know this is a, a small point to consider, but verse 2 says, preach the word. It doesn't say a word. It says the word. Paul's implying here and pointing to the word of God. The Holy Scriptures preach the word. He says be ready in season and out of season. That literally means when it's wanted and when it's not. Be ready in season and, and out of season. He said convince, rebuke and exhort with all long suffering and teaching. Why? Verse 3 for the time will come when they will not endure sound that is healthy doctrine. But according to what? Their own desires. According to their own desires because they have, and I love this uh, picture here, itching ears. 
I picture a dog who's got uh, maybe some ear mites in his ears itching, and he's just a scratching that ear. Because they have itching ears, they will heap up for themselves teachers, and they will turn their ears away from the truth and turn, uh, be turned aside to fables, to myths, to things that aren't truth. And so the focus is on, on the Word of God. On, on making sure that we are preaching and teaching uh, the Word of God. That we're not adding to or taking away from or maybe pulling a scripture text out of its context and twisting it to mean something that it never was meant to mean. In John chapter 8, verse 32, Jesus said, And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. So somebody says, We can't understand the truth. Actually, we can that's why we have the truth, and that's why Jesus said, you can know the truth. You can know the truth, and the truth will make you free. And so we do have to read and study. And I like the words of Jesus in his prayer in John 17. And verse 17, there he said, sanctify them with thy truth. Thy word is truth. And so how do we go about standing up for God and for God's word against those who would pervert the Bible? How do we do that? Well, first and foremost, we do so with an attitude and a heart of love. Of love and, and compassion. Paul said in Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15, to speak the truth in love. So we've got to have courage and, and uh, boldness, but we do so with love. The attitude is not, I'm right and you're wrong. We're not going to pit ourselves against them. We're just simply coming with humility and compassion and love and saying, that's not what the Bible says. Let's go to the Bible and see what the Word of God actually says. That's why it's so important that, that we can provide book, chapter, and verse. The location for uh, the authority that we have in Christ to preach and to teach only what the Word of God teaches us. So we want to have book, chapter, and verse. Because there's a lot of, a lot of traditions many times that get, gets elevated to the same level uh, as truth. And that's, that's dangerous. We can't do that. We can't uh, have man's tradition and uh, the truth of God's word on the same level. We got to make sure that we elevate truth to its rightful uh, position. Go to Matthew chapter 15 for a moment uh, before we make any more progress. Matthew chapter 15. We're going to look beginning in verse number 3. Matthew chapter 15, verse uh, number 3. Matthew chapter 15, verse 3. And he answered and said to them, Why do you also transgress the commandment of God because of your tradition? For God commanded, saying, Honor your father and your mother. And he who curses father or mother, let him be put to death. But you say, Whoever says to his father or mother, Whatever profit you might receive from me is a gift to God. Then he need not honor his father or mother. Thus you have made the commandment of God of no effect by your tradition. In verse 7, Jesus called them hypocrites. Well did Isaiah prophesy about you, saying, These people draw near to me with their mouth and honor me with their lips, but their heart is far from me. And in vain, verse 9, in vain they worship me, teaching as doctrines the commandments of men. And so we have to be careful, be very careful that, that our traditions or our opinions or maybe what we think about Scripture isn't elevated to the same uh, level as the truth of God's Word. So we've got to be uh, careful uh, that, that, again, that we do provide book, chapter, and verse. Share with people what God uh, says in his word. Because it's not about what I think, not about what you think. It's about what God has already said. Thus saith the Lord. Isn't that what Jesus used when he was tempted in Matthew chapter 4? On those three temptations, remember those three words? It is written. It is written. And that's what we need to be able to do. That's why we need to be students of the Word of God and reading the Word of God and filling our minds with the Word of God. So when we're out in the world and people are asking us those questions or we hear someone uh, teaching and it doesn't sound quite right, you know, we can take our Bible and say, hey, you know what? That's not what the Bible says. This is what it says over here and, and give them book, chapter, and verse and, and help them to see and to better understand 
uh, the Word of God. And so it's all right to confront somebody about the Word of God, but do so with love and compassion and respect, and it's not you against them. You're not trying to win an argument. You're simply trying to uh, clarify and, and show them the Word of God. But we still have to be willing to take that stand. That song says, stand up, stand up for Jesus. And that's what we need to be able to do, be willing to do. Time and time again, we read uh, of those in Scripture who gave their life uh, for the cause of Christ simply because they were preaching and teaching Jesus. They would face prison or stoning, whatever the uh, persecution may be. They did not stop preaching. They didn't stop teaching simply because somebody was maybe offended. We do so with love. We do so with humility. We do so, though, with, with, with courage and boldness because whose word is this? Not mine. Not yours. It's not man's. This is God's word. And so we need to make sure that we are uh, holding people to the standard of God's Word, holding ourselves to the same standard of, of God's Word as we share it with other people. Psalm 119, verse 105. is a great verse. Thy Word is a lamp unto my feet and a light to my pathway. We live in a very dark world spiritually. So we need to make sure that, that, that we are helping to shine the light of God's Word uh, clearly uh, in, in the world so that people can hear and see and experience Jesus in our own lives. We don't want to build on man's tradition. We want to make sure that we're building on the truth of, of God's Word. And sometimes we have to take a stand. We have to take a stand and, and uh, uh, maybe go against those who would teach contrary to the Word of God. But how do we do it? With love, with humility, with compassion, not seeking an argument. You know, it's not us against them. It's, this is what the Word of God says. Thus saith the Lord. Let's move on to number three, though. Let's move on to the last one for tonight. And that is, we can better imitate Jesus uh, by seeking to save the lost. By seeking to save the lost. Just like Jesus did. I mean, that was his mission, wasn't it? That was the reason he came. Luke chapter 19 and verse 10. For the Son of Man has come to seek and to save that which was lost. And that's not just talking about uh, sinners, saving lost sinners. Uh, a more uh, deeper understanding, a better understanding would be uh, Jesus came to reconcile lost man who had been separated from God uh, because of his sin. Come to seek and to save that which was lost. That that relationship needed to be restored. Uh, reconciliation needed to be made between man and God. And so Jesus came on, on an eternal rescue mission to reconcile man who's been separated from God because of his sin and be able to bring him back into a right relationship. We know that sin separates us from God. Isaiah 59, verse 1 and 2. And so Jesus came uh, to restore, uh, to heal, to reconcile us. Uh, to bridge the gap, if you will, between man and God. And we all know that we, we have that sin disease. Romans 3.23, for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. My question is on this point is, have we lost the desire to seek and to save the lost? And I want, you, I want you to answer that question, but I want you to think about your answer like this. If you're a Christian tonight, someone loved you enough and cared enough about you to teach you the gospel, to share with you the, the gospel plan of salvation. You might have been a young person or an adult or even an older person, but someone cared enough and loved your soul enough to share with you the saving message of Jesus. So you and I need to be the same and do the same for someone else to love that soul enough to say hey do you know Jesus have you obeyed the gospel have you been baptized for for the right reason that's why Jesus came to seek and to to save uh, the lost to make salvation through him possible there is no other way by the way it's only Jesus and we need to remember that 
Acts chapter 4 and verse 12, there is no other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. It's Jesus and only Jesus. The world says there's a lot of different ways that you can be saved. Probably one of the more destructive and no doubt probably the, the most destructive is what the world has called the sinner's prayer. Very dangerous. Very dangerous. And nowhere is it taught in Scripture at all. So we have to, again, share with people what the Word of God says, making sure that they understand what God expects of us in order to not only be saved, but to make heaven uh, our eternal home. I bet if I ask you to raise your hand if you want to be like Jesus, every hand, they, you got two of them, they're going to go up. I mean, all of us, I know, looking around, we want to be like Jesus. If I were to ask you tonight, are you striving to follow and imitate Jesus? Again, I know every hand would go up. That's why this, these lessons are entitled, How to Better Imitate Jesus. How can we imitate Jesus better? Because that's the goal. And I want to get to one last verse. I've actually saved this for last. Turn in your Bible. I want you to see it. Matthew chapter 10, verse 25. Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse number uh, 25. I'll give you a moment to get there if you're getting to it. Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse number 25. We all want to be like Jesus. We all want to imitate uh, him better. And I think this passage here in Matthew chapter 10, uh, verse number 25, re really hits home. Matthew chapter 10, verse 25, Jesus said, It is enough for a disciple that he be like his teacher and a servant like his master. Wouldn't that be a tremendous compliment that could be uh, given to any of us as Christians? To be like our master, uh, to be like our teacher, to be more and more uh, like Jesus. And the eight that we have shared from last week and this week, again, I know there's, you can probably do a dozen more if you wanted to, of ways, things we could do practically every day uh, to imitate Jesus better. But if you put any of these eight or all of these eight into practice every day, we're going to be more like Jesus because this is exactly how Jesus lived each and, and every day. And we want to be just like him. And it, it might be in our own lives as we have maybe had an opportunity to really evaluate, maybe a chance to, to look at ourselves, take some inventory, you know, comparing ourselves uh, to Jesus and our own lives, opening up the Word of God as the, the, the perfect mirror, the mirror of God's Word. We've seen some places maybe, hey, I'm not like Jesus in this area or in this way, and I want to be. We all make New Year's resolutions, don't we? I hope at the very top of that New Year's resolution list is you want to be more like Jesus. You want to be more like Jesus so one day when all of life is over, we can hear him say, well done, good and faithful servant. Maybe tonight we've recognized, hey, I'm not as much like Jesus as I want to be, as I need to be. Well, the good news is you can you can repent of those sins. You can get rid of whatever it is, is that might be hindering you from being more and more like him and make it right. We're going to give you that opportunity. But an uh, interesting thing about the invitation that's extended, it's not just open on Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. That invitation is extended to everyone all the time. But it might be tonight that you realize, hey, I need to do something. I need to get this right. I need to be what God wants me to be. Maybe tonight I need to be a Christian. I need to obey the gospel and have my sins washed away. Because as we go back out into our mission field again, what does the world need to see? Jesus. It needs to see Jesus more and more. And who else is going to show Jesus in our lives than Christians, the Lord's church? Let it begin with us. Maybe tonight you need that opportunity. To, to make things right and to be more like Jesus. We're going to sing a song to encourage and help. Uh, if there's a way that we can help you, please come and let us know how. As so we stand together and sing. Would you live for Jesus and be always pure and good? Would you walk with me?
92, let the beauty of Jesus be seen. If there are any who are unable to take the Lord's Supper this morning, if you'd like to exit out the back of the library, you'll be assisted there. <coughs> After this song, we'll be dismissed in prayer.